Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all-new Ryzen-powered mini PC from Menace Forums known as the HM50. Now in the past, I've taken a look at a couple of their mobile Ryzen APU-powered mini PCs, but all of those were powered by either a second generation or a third generation mobile APU. But when it comes to the new HM50, this is actually powered by a fourth gen. More notably, the 4500U, and yes, this is the same CPU or APU that comes in the IA Neo and other mini PCs like the Asus PN50. And yeah, it's definitely a smaller PC. On the front here, we have two USB 3.1 ports, plenty of ventilation, and around back here, we have dual Ethernet ports. Now, when it comes to this little mini PC here, it does offer a little bit of expansion. Now, taking a look at the front of the unit, from the left to the right, we have our power button, microphone in, headphones out, two USB 3.1 ports, and USB Type-C up front here that does support display out. Moving around back here, we have four more USB 3.1 ports and dual Ethernet. One of these jacks is gigabit, the other one is 2.5. We also have a full-size display port, full-size HDMI, and our USB Type-C power input on the back here. So when it comes to the specs of the HM50 for that CPU, we have that AMD Ryzen 5 4500U, 6 cores, 6 threads, base clock at 2.3 with a boost up to 4.0. Built-in Radeon 6 graphics at 1500MHz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, and this does have two DIMMs in here, so it's running in dual channel. A 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and there's enough room in this tiny PC to add two more 2.5 inch drives. And before we jump right into testing, I did want to pull this thing apart real quick to take a look inside of it. We do have room in here for two extra 2.5 inch SSDs. You can swap out this M.2 SSD if you want to, and you can add up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. But right now, we're just rocking 16 gigabytes at 3200. Now, we all know that sometimes these mini PCs can get a bit loud, but it's a lot different with the HM50. I mean, check out this heatsink combo that they've added to this mobile chip. And in this thing, they've basically added a desktop cooler and fan, so it is super whisper quiet, even when it's boosted up to its maximum of 4 gigahertz for a long period of time. This cooler here could cool down a 65 watt chip, and this thing's only running at 25 watts. Alright, so first things first, I did want to test out some 4K video playback, because I do think this would make an awesome little Plex server, given that we have those extra hard drive bays inside of it and all of this I.O. It's a very low powered unit, super quiet, I mean even with my ear up to it, it's really hard to hear it with that desktop style CPU cooler on this mobile chip. And when it comes to 4K video streaming from your favorite apps, you're not going to have an issue whatsoever. This is connected to a BenQ 4K monitor, so we're really at 4K here. And I do have stats for nerds running, so up in the top left hand corner on the initial load in, we had 5 drop frames. If I skip ahead here, did jump up to 11, but that's something you would never notice. I mean, we're getting really good performance here with 4K video streaming. I also wanted to test native 4K video playback, so this is running from the internal drive. 4K, 60fps, 85 megabits per second, working amazingly here. So this will handle all of your native and streaming 4K video playback needs. Now using this as an everyday desktop has worked out really well. It does have AX Wi-Fi built in, so we have Wi-Fi 6 and browsing the web is a breeze on this 4500U. I also went through and ran some of my favorite benchmarks. And first up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1089, multi, 4883. Not bad at all here, we're getting a decent single core score given that this is a 4th gen mobile CPU. And keep in mind, we got 6 cores and 6 threads here. The next thing I ran was PC Mark 10 with a total score of 4859. Let's go ahead and move over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid. We got a total score of 11,583. Next up, Firestrike, 2,694, and finally, Time Spy, with a 1,030. Now keep in mind, this is not a gaming machine whatsoever, but it doesn't mean we can't try to have some fun with it. So now I want to move over to some real-world gaming and see how this thing performs. Overwatch, with a medium-low mix at 1080p, I got an average of 83 FPS. It's fully playable like this. Overall, I think it still looks good, and it's playing very, very well on this tiny machine. Get in here. 
Next up, we have Fortnite 1080p in performance mode, and I got an average of 92 FPS out of this. I was actually not expecting this, but that new performance mode really does a great job with these lower end systems. I was really hoping that I could get Forza Horizon 4 running at 1080p, but even on very low, it was going under 60. So what I did was drop it down to 900p or 1600 by 900, mixed it up a bit with some medium and low settings, and I was actually able to get an average of 67 FPS. GTA 5 900p normal settings averaged out at 66 FPS. Not bad at all here. Again, I was kind of hoping that we could do 1080p with it, but we don't have a super powerful GPU here. And that's the main reason I had to drop that resolution down. And another thing that some viewers might have noticed is I do have that CPU package power running up in the top left hand corner with Afterburner. It's set up to run at 25 watts and we're right around there and with that built in cooler, we're seeing some really decent temps here. With GTA 5, we're around 61 to 62 degrees Celsius. On some harder to run stuff, it does jump up to around 65, but that's about it. Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077. We definitely had to drop this down, so we're at low, 80% resolution scale, 720p, and I got an average of 31 FPS, and you can see that it will drop below 30. This is just one of those games that's really hard to run on a mobile APU. And the final game I tested for this video is Doom Eternal, 720p, low, with 100% resolution scale. I got an average of 41 FPS. We could bring this up to around the 50s by taking it down to around 80% resolution scale, but I just left that at 100 to see what it would do. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and this little chip actually handles a lot of this stuff really well, especially at that 25 watt mark. First up, PS2 using PCSX2 with the DirectX 11 backend, upscaled to 720p, looking really good. I got great performance out of this one. Taking it up a bit to PS3 using RPCS3. This is Tekken 6. We got that Vulcan back end going, and it's running at full speed. Now, I also tried Skate, but unfortunately, in a highly populated place, it would drop down. We just don't have enough power to run every PS3 game, but there are some that will be fully playable, like Tekken 6, as you can see here, and Demon Souls. And finally, Wii U using SimU, Vulcan back in, Async shaders, Breath of the Wild, got it locked at 30, and it's running amazingly. So yeah, I mean, this little mobile chip sitting at that 25 watt mark does make a really nice little emulation machine. And you didn't see anything lower in, because when it comes to like Dolphin or Wii, it's just going to run it at full speed. Same thing with Dreamcast, PSP, and N64. As for total system power consumption from the wall with the HM50, idle, 7 watts, 4K video playback, 11, gaming, 32, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall with my extreme test, which won't happen every single day, was 51 watts. So in the end, the HM50 is definitely a solid little Ryzen powered mini PC. And the cooling system they used on this mobile chip definitely does a great job, because I tried to get this thing to over temp, I ran Cinebench several times and the highest CPU temperature that I recorded was 68 degrees Celsius. And even with that, maxing out all six cores, you really can't even hear this PC unless you get about 11 inches from it with your ear. If this was mounted to the back of a monitor, you'd never really even know it was there. I would think that this was a silent PC the way they have this cooling system set up. So if you're in the market for a super small Ryzen powered mini PC for everyday desktop use, 4K video playback, some light gaming, and even emulation, 
the HM50 is definitely one to think about. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this little PC, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.